In this video, we're going to be heading to the Grand Canyon Caverns on historic Route 66 near Peach Springs, Arizona. The purpose of the trip is to spend the night in the cave's cavern suite, which is something that I've wanted to do since the first time I visited the caverns. The caverns were discovered in 1927 and are the largest dry caverns in the United States and possibly on the planet. For a brief period from 1957 to 1962, they were called dinosaur caverns, so you'll see a lot of dinosaur stuff all throughout the property. Here at the main entrance, which also holds the gift shop and restaurant, you'll see a T-Rex standing right out in front. Next to the T-Rex, you'll see a replica of the original entrance to the caverns. When the caverns were discovered in 1927 by Walter Peck, originally he would lower people down into the caverns on a rope with only a lantern or a match to light their way. And for the privilege of being lowered into the caverns on a rope, he charged a 25 cent entrance fee. And of course, with the Grand Canyon Caverns being on Route 66, you'll see plenty of reminders of that there as well. Now when you first enter the building that holds the caverns entrance, the first thing you'll come across is the restaurant. The restaurant has a variety of food items available for sale, and we heard that the pie is really delicious though we did not try any on this trip. And with Route 66 being known for a variety of world's largest items, here's the world's largest dinosaur saddle. Now, uh, keep in mind the elevator is at least from the 1950s to 60s, so if the elevator gets up here, it's not gonna open on its own, you gotta <gasps> open it. Then we descended 220 feet in an elevator that was built in 1962 down to our home for the night. Not everyone was thrilled about it, however. Are you ready to sleep in a cave? No. <laughs> After descending the 220 feet, it's a short walk to where we'll be sleeping the night in the cavern suite. Now, on the surface level, the Grand Canyon Caverns also has campgrounds and a motel as well, but this is the only room inside the cavern so only one group of people can stay there a night um, as you can see the temperature stays around 56 degrees year round in the caverns though according to this thermometer it was 59 degrees um, but that's most likely because we were near the entrance so there was a little bit of airflow coming down from the elevator shaft and as i was mentioning the cavern suite can sleep up to six people and is available 364 nights out of the year. I was told that during the summer months and in the busier season, it could be booked every night. But when we went in early March, we were told that it usually only a couple nights a week that it's actually booked up. And so you just have to check availability for the room if you want to sleep there. So here we are entering the what's called the Chapel of the Ages. Um, it is a very large room in the cavern, and you'll get your first view of the room where we'll be staying the night. And you can see the lights in the, up in the distance lit up uh, for the room. And here's a view of the bedroom from behind the theater area. So the cavern suite is advertised as the oldest, deepest, darkest, largest, and quietest hotel room in the world. So as we head up the stairs to the sleeping area and to the room itself, first we'll go past the sleeping area behind where the beds are through these cowboy doors. There is a little theater here. 
they originally had plans to do plays and concerts down here, except the lack of emergency exits made it so they weren't allowed to do that. You can't really see the seats too well, but they were actually brought over from a Hollywood theater that was closing down. There has been a number of weddings held in the cave, however. And after the wedding, there is a tradition that the bride will leave her veil or a bouquet on the wall. And due to the dry atmosphere in the cave, the item will be preserved. And you can kind of get a glimpse of the full room here. Uh, but we'll take a closer look at it in just a second. So heading into the room itself, there's two beds. There's a phone, but it actually only calls up to the building above if you need to get a hold of the attendant for anything. There is an attendant who stays up there the whole night that you are in the cave. David was our attendant, and he was actually pretty awesome. And there's a TV. There's no cable or satellite. It's Blu-ray and DVD player only. Small kitchen area with a refrigerator and a microwave, some condiments. Um, there's a library of DVDs. National Geographic magazines, a few board games. Uh, there's actually records. There is a record player in the cave, stereo, and then here's the bathroom. We were told uh, we had about 10 flushes. Uh, the water has to be brought down by the employees. There's no plumbing that comes down to the cave. And so that's the room. Uh, well, there's also this uh, rock dog guarding the room. After dropping off our stuff at the room, we took a little tour of the cave. Now when you stay in the cavern suite, you can actually walk around the cave as much as you like. Uh, they ask that you stay on the trails. However, we took the tour with the tour guide, um, so that way we can learn as much about the cave as possible. The caverns are really well lit. Sometimes it won't really show up on the footage however the trails are well lit the caverns themselves are well lit you're not going to get lost in there this portion of the caverns was actually designated a bomb shelter during the cuban missile crisis in 1962. there's a ton of water and food and actually enough to feed up to 2,000 people When we were on the cave tour, our tour guide did tell us that they are actually still exploring the cave. It hasn't been fully explored yet, and there are still caverns that they haven't gone completely through, and it's still actively being searched. And even though it's a dry cave and nothing lives in it, except for us for the night, there are a lot of interesting features to see in the cave, even with the lack of stalactites and stalagmites. The Grand Canyon Caverns also offers tours where you can go off trail. I think they're a little bit more expensive and a little bit longer tours, but you can actually get off the trail and do some actual spelunking and here's the mystery room 
which is one of those places in the caverns that we're told has not been fully explored yet. The skeletons are obviously not real skeletons. In this room you can see where they drilled into the caverns in order to get the cement down in order to pave the road. And also right nearby is the 1930s entrance to the cavern which was kind of down this ladder and stairs and a mummified bobcat. Bob the bobcat fell through the original map entrance around 1850, 170 years ago. They also found the remains of an 11,000 year old giant sloth that fell into the caverns and broke in its back, which this is a replica of. You can still see its claw marks on the wall where it tried to claw its way out. The steepest stairs in the caverns are actually at the end and they go down, so it's not a very strenuous hike through the caverns. Um, however, it is definitely not handicap accessible. And then as we approach the end of the stairs, uh, we are back in the main room, the Chapel of the Ages, and the bedroom will once again be visible. And right near the bedroom, there is this very deep looking hole that leads to the waterways below. and a display case with some helicytes. You can also find an inscription in the cement showing the year that it was laid. For dinner, we opted to have the food brought down to us and eat in the cave. Raymond had a hot dog. Jessica had some healthy pasta and chicken. And I had the unhealthy choice of a barbecue bacon cheeseburger with onion rings. In all, it was pretty delicious. Then after dinner, we were treated to a concert. And what movie do you watch when you spend the night in the cave? Goonies, of course. Okay, now we're gonna try to turn the main lights off and uh, it's already pretty dark, so I don't know how well you could see us, but uh, we'll see how dark it gets in here. And there is no light anywhere it is pitch dark in here the only light is actually from the camera from the camera screen all right um i think we will be turning these lights back on now And there we go. All right, now it's bedtime. I'm gonna turn off the last lights here and then make my way over to the bed just a few feet away in the dark. And here we go. And it is dark in here. All right, see you in the morning. Well, we did it. Uh, we made it the night through the cave. 
It was a really unique experience, definitely worth putting on your bucket list. Um, I mean, you'll never find another hotel room like this. Um, I definitely give it a thumbs up. Um, what did you think? I also give it a thumbs up. It was pretty cold, but they gave you lots of blankets. And what did you think? Cold. No. Well, there you have it. Two thumbs up, one thumbs down. Um, check it out. Please uh, give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.